Hello, I'm Bob Beale, and we're here today with Tracy Rogers, who's a marine zoologist at the University of New South Wales, who spent almost two decades travelling down to Antarctica to study leopard seals. So, Tracy, why study leopard seals? I'm really interested in systems in change, and Antarctica is a is a great place to look at change because there's you know some of the biggest changes that are happening at the moment on Earth are, are happening in the Antarctic. You mean environmental change? Environmental yeah. change. Mm -hmm. And something like the leopard seal and other predators like them are, because they're right at the top of the food chain, they're some of the first animals to show change and show the impacts of what change is happening. Mm -hmm. and, and you're working mainly in, in the Antarctic Peninsula? Yes, so the work that I do in the, the, the Antarctic Peninsula um, mirrors the work that we, we do off eastern Antarctica. And why we want to do that is off the western Antarctic because where some of the greatest changes on Earth are happening. So the greatest warming events and you have most of the, the glaciers are in retreat. You've got massive amounts of fresh water into the system. You've got the, um, the water temperatures are warming. Krill stocks are down by 80% over the last 30 years. And whereas off the eastern Antarctic, completely on the other side, um, there's very little change happening. So what we're doing is looking at both of those systems um, back in, and then back in time to see how uh, the different species, particularly the leopard seal, has, has changed over that time. Mm. Okay, so now you've got a couple of decades of, of data on, on these things, so what's happening to the leopard seals amid all this change? Yes, yeah, so what we've done to, to get the couple of decades worth of, um, um, but the, the, we want to go part back even further than a couple of decades, back uh, a couple of hundred years, that we've used the whiskers of the seals. They're like little, like a book, like an archive of what the, um, using stable isotopes, of what the animals were actually eating. So going back to museum collection samples, we can get a window back into time of whenever that animal was collected. So I've got Mawson and Shackleton and Scott's. Any, we, we go searching for an explorer and find out where yeah. their specimens ended up, go to the country and collect the specimens. And then for a leopard seal, why we, we like to work on them as well is that their whiskers are an archive for about five years of dietary history. So we can go back the last 150 years for the samples that we have span to look at how diet, which reflects food web change, has changed over that time, both in the eastern Antarctic, where there's been little change, compared to western Antarctica, where we're seeing the massive amounts of environmental change. Mm. Okay, so let's go back to what, what have you what found? Was <laughs> exactly. What's happened over Cut the last 150 the years? Well, over the last 150 years, what we're finding is that the, the leopard seals, which are the, the a top predator, so they'll, as we we're talking about, they'll eat seals and penguins and other other sorts of prey. Those on the the Western Antarctic are no longer top predators; they only eat krill, and so they've become rather than a top predator, they're actually a grazer. And yet the krill is down by, you know, it's a depleted resource; it's down by 80% over the last 30 years. Whereas off the east, where all the same story with the whaling, etc., etc., is still happening, they're not. The, the animals are still top predators. So when we go back. 100 years ago prior to the, to the warming that we've seen over the last couple of decades, that in both the east and the west, that the leopard seals were top predators, whereas now, off the west, they're not the krillivores, they just eat krill, so they're, they're, they're not really a top predator anymore. Right. So uh, is, is this affecting their body size? Yeah, the animals off the western Antarctic are shrinking, so the females have shrunk by 10%, whereas off the east they're still uh, the same size as they were sort of in the in the 1920s. Mm. Is, is that pattern also evident in other seals and other predators? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're searching out looking at other the other species as well and that the, the crab eater seals appear to have been shrinking as well. So at the moment what we're doing is finding old data sets as well as um, these museum collections to be able to go back in time. Mm. So when you find the museum collections can you measure the, the full animal? Did they keep the whole animal? Or? Wonderfully, people, the, the, old, the old explorer dudes were actually very good at collecting because um, the specimens that they collected, they were actually shooting f to feed their dogs. And uh, they collected quite a lot of biologically significant data. In fact, some of the samples from the 70s and 80s are collected less rigorously, shall we say, than those that were collected in the 1920s and 30s. Mm. Uh, and so a lot of that information is actually there. Measuring from the pelts now is, 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 is no good. So we, the, the, um, the isotopic labelling is what we're after from the museum collections. So that's the chemical fingerprints of, exactly. of how that animal lived. The bits of right. traces that are in its whiskers and its yeah. teeth and skin and so on. That's yeah. right. 
And so from a tooth, you can actually follow the dietary history over the lifetime of the animals. Like a tree rings have, have information on the atmosphere at the time that the, the, the tree was growing. Same with the rings of your teeth. Mm. That it has information about your diet with each one of the rings in, in the year that, that, that it was growing. Wow, that's really interesting. Tracy, thank you very much. It's, it's fascinating. And thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Bob. Mm.